Hey everybody, it's Cauliflower Man here. I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. So in today's video, I wanted to focus on uh, actually installing a QT client for a cryptocurrency. So the cryptocurrency I'm going to show you guys how to use today is Litecoin. And the reason why I wanted to show you guys Litecoin was because I actually hadn't downloaded the Litecoin wallet myself. So I just wanted to do it. Um, just so you guys know, I'm using Ubuntu 16.04. Um, so if you're using Windows, this m installation might be a little bit different. It should be pretty similar, actually. Um, I mean, I guess in Ubuntu, I do a... Uh, command line sort of installation so you might not do that in Windows usually in Windows it's a little bit easier um, to do everything um, as far as using a wallet is concerned uh, the only problem I have with Windows is that uh, Windows with a lot of the applications they use they take your metadata and use that for you know advertisers for different things or for like they'll just have your metadata just for you know their own purposes which isn't necessarily a bad thing but I just like using uh, Ubuntu because it just seems to well one it's free so that's always nice. It's free. That's great. But two, uh, it keeps your privacy, you know, completely intact because they have no reason to get rid of, like, to sell your privacy because it's open source. So you don't have to worry about that. But anyways, uh, so if you're doing this on Windows, you know, you can try and adapt it for yourself. But I'm going to show you guys how to do it on Ubuntu. And the one good thing about Ubuntu is that, you know, it doesn't cost any money to, you know, use any of this stuff I'm going to show you. So it's all free. So it's not like you have to do anything but invest, you know, your time and energy. But anyways, when you go to uh, download Litecoin, again, go to the website. The thing about Litecoin is, is it's a really established coin. So they have a great website and uh, it's really easy to use. So I'm going to download the uh, wallet here, Litecoin Core and uh, yeah I guess it's the core wallet uh, that you really want for any sort of uh, cryptocurrency and that's it's usually called a QT wallet too or something but uh, that's really what you want and it's the best type of wallet it has encryption on the wallet so if you don't have a you know core wallet or a QT wallet then uh, you have to encrypt the files yourself so for like Zcash or Zencash or Z Classic, you have to do that yourself and I can show you guys how to do that it's just a little bit harder um, you have to know a, a little bit more like what you're doing and you have to remember one more password but it's really like it's simple once you know what you're doing um, this one's just the easier type of wallet to download so let's just go ahead and talk about this one first like I said I'll talk about the uh, wallets you have to encrypt yourself later on but this is one that comes with its own encryption so when you download the wallet you'll get something like this in your download file uh, you'll get a you'll get a tar file so you're gonna open that up and you're gonna open it up with the uh, archive uh, manager so the archive manager it's nothing fancy it'll just give you an option to extract the file um, and so one thing you can do beforehand maybe I should have made this a uh, slide before this but I put it here anyways uh, I usually create a file to extract the files into because I like to just you know organize things my own way um, just so you know for most cryptocurrencies when they create the cryptocurrency it's going to create its own file called dot dot uh, and then the name of that cryptocurrency so in this name or in the name or in the case of Litecoin it'll be dot Litecoin um, except it'll be all lowercase so a lot of times I will uh, extract the file into you know a uh, dot and then uppercase name of that cryptocurrency just so they're both together but they're separate uh, you can put them all in the same you can put it all in the same file if you want it doesn't really matter um, that's just the way I do it and uh, again if you uh, use a period before the uh, file that makes it a hidden hidden file so you can't see these files unless you hit control H that reveals hidden files on Ubuntu so anyways I, I extracted it into this file you can extract it into a different type of file or a different name, differently named file if you want to. But the whole point is after you extract it, um, if you look at the top of this picture here, you can see where it says uh, first home and then the name of the file or the folder I created, dot Litecoin, capital L, and then it's all the extracted files that I had in there. Um, so the extracted file, the full thing is Litecoin uh, dash 0 0.14.2. Uh, so you go into that and you'll open up another file called bin. And then you'll what you want to see in bin is Litecoin dash QT. If you see that, then you're golden. That's the program you want. So what I usually do here is I'll right click in uh, just on the open space, uh, that open white space. Don't right click exactly on Litecoin QT. I mean you can do it like that, I guess, but I just right click on the open space, open up a command. Uh, terminal or whatever. I open up a terminal and then I will type in the command uh, 
period slash or backslash Litecoin dash QT. And so uh, that actually opens up the uh, Litecoin wallet and it'll begin syncing the wallet. And again, so uh, for Litecoin, it's called Litecoin QT. For Bitcoin, it's called Bitcoin QT. For Zcoin, it's Zcoin QT. You know, the name uh, before QT just changes depending on the coin. So for any coin that has a QT wallet or a core wallet or whatever, um, this it's the same process. It's just the name of the files will change based on the coin. But the end result is the same, and this is the end result. Um, the wallet will start to sync, and as you can see, I hadn't synced this at all. So uh, right here, I'm six years behind. I guess that's how long Litecoin's been out, six years or something. That really seems like longer than it's been out, but not, I mean, that could be about right. Who really knows? Um, I mean, the whole point of Litecoin when it first came out, I know, was that script mining, which, you know, that's interesting, but that's why I don't think Litecoin's like a great investment. That's really all it's got is the script mining. But anyways, uh, when you download a QT wallet, this is, again, what it looks like. Um, but the, the, what you want to do is uh, when you download this QT wallet, uh, in the top tab, you will see, like, the options. Um, I don't know if this is on the actual wallet GUI itself or at the top of your um, screen on your computer. But anyways, there will be a couple of options, and one of them will say um, encrypt wallet, and you want to encrypt the wallet. And you, the thing you have to know about using a QT wallet, also known as a core wallet, so this would be true of Bitcoin Core as well. If you have your own wallet and you don't encrypt the wallet, whoever has access to your computer can do whatever they want with your uh your coins, whatever coins they are. So if you don't encrypt the wallet, whoever has access to your computer, all they have to do is click or start, you know, your Litecoin Core wallet, and then they can send your money out of there. Um, the only thing that can stop them from doing that is encrypting the wallet yourself. So it's absolutely ins essential to encrypt your wallet, but you have to encrypt it, you know, with a password you'll remember, because um, otherwise you'll lose access to your funds. But uh, you want to definitely have a password on there. Um, and so then. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about too is uh, the wallet or cryptocurrencies that don't have a QT wallet. Like if you don't know um, how to encrypt files yourself, you're not going to want to use them because, like I said, this in has the encryption option in it. So for Litecoin and Bitcoin and Zcoin and Dash, you don't have to worry about this. In Pivx, you don't have to worry about this. For, but for something like Zcash or Zclassic or Zencash, you have to actually encrypt the files yourself because the wallet doesn't come with encryption on it. So it's a little bit harder to do. And I'm going to come out with videos showing you guys how to do that. Um, but uh, like I said, um, you know that'll be those will be coming out. They're not. It's a, it's different than this Litecoin QT uh, installation process. So the entire installation process for Zcash is different. So I'll come out with a fully different video on that. But the final thing I wanted to add to this one was I'm actually going to also include include a donation address for a Litecoin wallet. Now I don't expect any donations actually at the time of this video. Um, but the reason why I wanted to include this was because I will be accepting well I mean I'm not gonna ever not accept donations but I I want to accept donations but the only people who I want to donate are people who I help to make money okay so uh, the reason why I say I don't want anyone to donate yet is because I've only really started making these cryptocurrency videos for like what two weeks now so like how on earth could I have made you money in two weeks there's absolutely no way I mean maybe you saw one of my videos on one of the cryptocurrencies I uh, you know, talked about, and it went up in price, but that, you know, I mean, it's only been two weeks, I mean, you give it some time, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> the other thing, too, is I don't ever expect people to, like, you know, if you watch some of my videos, and you make some trades, uh, and you use some of my advice, and I make you some money, I'm not saying, like, you know, if I make you, like, a thousand dollars on, or if I make you like a thousand dollars on your trades, don't think like, oh, I should give you know ten percent to Cauliflower Man. No, give me like a dollar or two or something. You know, like keep the money for yourself. You're the one making the trades. Uh, only pay me what you think my advice is worth. You know, like if it's uh, whether whether it's from me telling you how to use a wallet and encrypt your wallet. That way you don't have to keep your coins on an exchange because you know how many exchanges have you know, been hacked at different times, most of them, to be honest, so it's always more safe to keep your wallets in your own wallet, or to keep your coins in your own wallet, so maybe, you know, the reason why you'll give me some 
donations is not going to be because I give you good trading advice. Maybe it's like I show you how to encrypt your own wallet and use your own wallet on your own computer. And so you put your coins, you know, instead of having them on an exchange, you put them in your own wallet and then the exchange you were using, you know, it goes down or something. And so then I save you money like that. And then it's like, you know, maybe you had 300 bucks on the exchange. Maybe it's worth, you know, you throwing me three bucks just to be like, hey, thanks, you saved me some money. But again, just if you're thinking about donating, only donate um, you know based on what you think my advice was worth and it remember it's just advice so it's not really worth that much the whole and the other thing you have to remember too is I'm only going to accept donations in cryptocurrencies that have small market caps so I consider these donations as an investment anyway so I'm not going to accept Bitcoin in, or donations because you know it has a high market cap and I want bigger returns so I'm going to focus on those small market cap coins but uh, so don't worry about them being small donations or whatever you don't have to worry about that whatsoever because I consider it to be you know an investment and then the final thing on donations that I want to say is that if you do actually ever donate, uh, always send a very small amount first. So uh, if you like, if you're sending Litecoin, don't send like, and you wanted to send like a three dollar donation first, don't send a three dollar donation first. Send like five cents. That way you can make sure that the Litecoin reaches the address first, and then you can finalize with the full transaction. That way you know that the transaction will go through. The only reason I say this is because um, like you want to make sure you're not sending to an invalid address, and if you just automatically send the full amount and like something goes wrong, then you just wasted a bunch of money. But if you send a transaction amount of like you know three, four, or five cents, something goes wrong. It's like okay, you wasted a nickel, but does it really matter? But anyways, that's the end of this video. Like I said, I'm going to come out with more videos on how to use other wallets that are less secure than these uh, QT wallets or the core wallets that Litecoin uses. Um, that'll be coming out soon. Um, so just stay tuned for those.